Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel and in this video we will talk about the extrinsic muscle uh, of the forelimb in the dog or what's called the shoulder girdle muscle. So let's get started. So the, the muscles uh, which are there to fix the forelimb to the body are as you can see highlighted uh, the first one is the brachiocephalic muscle. The second one is the trapezius muscle the omotransversarius muscle, the latissimus dorsi, and the pectoral muscles, including the superficial pectoral muscle and the deep pectoral muscle. And of course, there are some muscles hitting in this picture. We are going also to dissect like uh, the rhomboidius muscle and the ventral serrate muscle. Now let's look at these muscles extends between the forelimb up to the neck and head the brachiocephalicus muscle. The brachiocephalicus muscle of the dog is appeared as one muscle that extends, as the name suggests, you know, from the forelimb and exactly from the brachium region to the head and neck. So one end attached on the distal third of the humerus and the second um, and is to the neck and the head. Here in the middle we can see a fibrous blade called the clavicular insertion or in some books clavicular tendon. This clavicular insertion is considered the origin of the components of the brachiocephalicus muscle. The muscle distal to the clavicular insertion that attached to the humerus is the cleidobrachialis muscle. While the muscle that extends from the clavicular insertion or clavicular tendon to the neck and the head called the cleidocephalicus muscle. The cleidocephalicus muscle has a in the dog two parts the cervical part and the mastoid part so the part cervicalis or the cervical part which attaches to the dorsal midline of the neck and called also the cleidocervicalis muscle and the other part extends to the mastoid process called the pars mastoidia or the mastoid part or in another word we can name it also the cleidomastoid muscle. Again, the cleidocephalicus muscle has two parts. The cleidocervicalis which attached to the dorsal midline of the neck and the cleidomastoidius which attached to the mastoid process of the skull. So attachment of these three components is the clavicular insertion, which is considered as the origin of these three components or muscles, while the insertion of the cleidobrachialis, uh, the distal end of the cranial border of the humerus, the insertion of the cleidocervicalis is the fibrous ref or the cranial half of the fibrous ref. The insertion of the cleidomastoidius muscle is the mastoid process of the temporal bone of the skull. Function of this muscle is to move the forelimb forward and extend the shoulder joint and draw the neck and the head to the side of course. Which nerve is responsible for the innervation of this uh, muscle is actually the accessory nerve and at the same time because it's a broad muscle, long muscle, so it's also innervated by the ventral branches of the cervical spinal nerves. 
Now let's look at the trapezius muscle. As you can see here, the trapezius muscle is triangular shaped. It is actually a thin muscle and divided into two parts. Here we have uh, the trapezius cervicis or what's called the cervical part of the trapezius muscle extends from the median rough of the neck and inserts to the spine of the scapula here the second part called the thoracic part or the trapezius thoracis extends from the supraspinous ligament of the thoracic vertebra and inserts to the spine of the scapula so the action or the function of this muscle is to elevate and abduct the forelimb and this muscle is innervated also by the accessory nerve so if we cut both parts of the trapezius muscle, we mean here the thoracic part and the cervical part at this level here and move these two parts up and down as you can see here. So in this case we can see the rhomboidius muscle. The rhomboidius muscle uh, lies under the trapezius in this uh, case and keep the dorsal border of the scapula close to the body. It has three parts, the capital, which we can see here, this is the capital part of the rhomboidius muscle, the cervical and the thoracic part of the rhomboidius muscle. So the narrow capital part of the rhomboidius muscle attached the cranial dorsal border of the scapula to the knuckle crest there of the occipital bone. The rhomboidius cervicis runs from the median rough of the neck to the dorsal border of the scapula, while the rhomboidius thoracis, this part here, connects the spine processes of the thoracic vertebra to the dorsal border of the scapula. So, in general, the origin, the origin of these three parts of the rhomboidius muscle is firstly the knuckle crest for the capital part, the median rough for the cervical part and uh, the spinous processes of the first uh, th uh, five uh, thoracic vertebra for the thoracic part of the rhomboidius muscle. So I will move it this way here to show you exactly how the rhomboidius muscle with all parts, thoracic, cervical and capital, keep the dorsal border of the scapula close to the body. The insertion of all of these three parts is the dorsal border of the scapula. The function of this muscle to elevate the forelimb and pull the scapula to the trunk like this. Innervation occurs by the ventral branches of the cervical and the, the thoracic spinal nerves. Here let's move to the next muscle which is uh, the latissimus dorsi. So this muscle here is triangular shaped and leads caudal to the scapula as you can see here and cover the most dorsal and lateral area of the thoracic wall. The origin of this muscle is from the thoracolumbar fascia. So this white structure which we can see here, this is the thoracolumbar fascia. And the insertion of this muscle is the teres major tuberosity. Teres major tuberosity is uh, uh, located on the medial surface of the humerus. From the name, we can remember that the teres major tuberosity is also the insertion of the teres major muscle, this muscle here. Both of them inserts to the uh, teres major tuberosity. Innervation of the latissimus dorsi is by the thoracodorsal nerve which we can see on the medial surface of this muscle here. This nerve, if we dissect this muscle, we can see that this nerve moves uh, together with the thoracodorsal artery and thoracodorsal 
uh, v. The thoracolumbar fascia is a deep fascia of the trunk. It arises from the supraspinous ligament and the spinous processes of the thoracic and lumbar vertebra covers the muscles of the vertebra, the muscles which we can see here, including the iliocostalis muscle, the longissimus muscle, and other muscles here in this area, and covers also the ribs in this uh, region here, and the, the abdomen even muscles. The thoracolumbar fascia serves as attachment for several muscles, including in this case, of course, the latissimus dorsi, and in the future, we will talk about the um, abdominal muscles, which uh, also um, originate from the thoracolumbar fascia. Okay, now let's uh, uh, dissect this muscle here. This is the omotransversarius muscle. The omotransversarius muscle extends from the acromion or the distal part of the spine of the scapula here up to the lateral surface of the wing of the atlas there which we can actually palpate even in live animals so the the wing of the atlas is the origin of this muscle in the dog and uh, this uh, the insertion of the omotransversarius muscle is the acromion or the distal part of the spine of the scapula just in front of the scapula, under the muscle, in front of the scapula, here we have this structure. This is the superficial cervical lymph node located under the muscle in this area. And located also in front of the scapula, that's why we name it also pre-scapular um, lymph node. This is one of the lymph nodes which we have to look at uh, in the slaughterhouse uh, in other animals. So the superficial cervical lymph node. This lymph node is located under the omotransversarius muscle here, which you know is located also under the skin. That's why it's very easy to access this lymph node in slaughterhouses. So the omotransversarius originates from the wing of the atlas in the dog and starts on the acromion. The function of this uh, muscle, if uh, the muscle is contracted, so it will move the, the forelimb forward and move the head uh, laterally. The omotransversarius muscle is innervated by the accessory nerve, which is the cranial nerve number 11. The pectoral muscles. The pectoral muscles extends actually from the sternum to the humerus in all animals. The pectoral muscle has two parts. The superficial pectoral muscle, these two muscles here, and the deep pectoral muscle. The superficial pectoral muscle has two parts. The first one is the descending pectoral muscle, is this one here, is a small located on the transverse pectoral muscle, on the transfer, this is the descending pectoral muscle located superficially to the transverse pectoral muscle, here. The, this muscle extends between the first part of the sternum to the crest of the greater tubercle of the humerus. The transverse pectoral muscle here extends between the first sternibra to the crest of the greater tubercle of the humerus. The action of this muscle is to adduct the forelimb toward the body, like this here. Innervation is by the cranial pectoral nerves. So the deep pectoral muscle extends from the sternum to the humerus. Okay? It's uh, larger and longer than the superficial pectoral muscle. Only the cranial part of this muscle is covered by the, trans, uh, the superficial pectoral muscle. An abdominal slip of this muscle is often present and we can see it here. This part, this small slip, is part of the deep pectoral muscle. Okay. The origin of this muscle is, or the deep digital flexor muscle, is the ventral part of the sternum, while the insertion of this deep 
pectoral muscle is the major portion of this uh, of the lesser tubercle of the humerus and uh, smaller bonerosus uh, to the larger tubercle of the humerus and its crest the action of the deep digital uh, deep uh, pectoral muscle is to adapt the forelimb and to pull the trunk cranially and the forelimb caudally at the same time it extends and flex the shoulder joint the innervation of the deep pectoral muscle occurs by the caudal pectoral nerves so this is again the superficial pectoral muscle with the descending pectoral muscle and the transverse pectoral muscle and here caudally we have the deep pectoral muscle the deep pectoral muscle so in the next video we will talk about uh, the ventral serratus muscle because we have in this case to cut all of these highlighted muscles in the picture so in the next video we will describe the ventral serratus muscle and we will also describe how to cut the forelimb and remove it completely from the body so see you in the next video bye bye for now Mm-hmm.